Welcome to EGH Bridge Cars. Well, today something a little different. I was in Harbor Freight the other day, big surprise, and I saw this, which is the Century Pneumatic 4 ounce adjustable spray gun, which is this, and it was very inexpensive. And I've been using a touch up gun I bought 30, 35 years ago. And it's getting a little rough around the edges, so I thought I would try it. And this is also a high volume, low pressure gun. Uh, and it shoots much smaller amounts. And I think that my other gun probably holds 8 to 10 ounces, and this is supposed to be about 4. So it's pretty straightforward. Standard nozzle, you can turn it. This cap. It doesn't take very much to get it on and off. I don't know. We'll see. And then it has two nozzles, or three adjustments, actually. So this is the pattern. So it goes from a round pattern to an oblong. And then, of course, this is the how much flow of paint you're going to get. And this knob here adjusts how much air pressure you have. Now, unfortunately, because it's a very small gun, it doesn't have a pressure gauge on it. So a lot of the old guns, when they would have this, would have like almost like a tire gauge would pop down, let you know how much pressure it had. So I suppose if you really wanted to be fussy, you can buy uh, little adjust attachments that have a regulator valve, a regulator knob, and a small gauge on them. I have that on a couple of the other guns. And if I started using this a lot, I probably will pick one up. Anyway, so I painted... Uh, in primer a couple of fenders this morning and I thought I'm not ready to paint the outside of those because I got the tent is gone the uh, paint booth tent is down because it's been raining but I thought I could try some red paint just on the inside of the fender because I'm not so worried about getting dust in there and I to be honest it's not finished to a high degree in there because you know I'm not looking for 100 points concourse cars so let's go put some paint in this thing and try it out well, I'm sure I'm going to sound a little muffled because I am wearing my respirator. Uh, I've not tried this gun at all yet. Oh, there we go. It's actually putting out a lot of paint. No, it definitely is painting much less than my other touch-up gun did. This is almost like an airbrush. And the flow is very inconsistent. And it just stopped. Try a little more air pressure. Oh, that's good. And then it stopped again. Took it all apart and cleaned it all up. And I strained the paint when I put it in. And it's just, just not doing anything. So, I got about a half a square foot of paint out of it and it just put the bed on me. You can see there's plenty of paint. When I do that, I can feel the air bubbling up through the top. Yeah, I made a mess in there. But it is not running the fly. The valve's wide open, and we're trying it both ways on the uh, pattern. So I would say that that was a fail. 
And that's the first thing I bought from Harbor Freight in a long time I'm really disappointed with. So, I guess you get what you pay for. I'm going to go dump this paint into my ancient gun and uh, paint this fender. Well, here's my ancient gun. That was right, just about twice the capacity, so it was about eight ounces. And as you can see, that is doing a much nicer job. Open the pattern up a little bit. To be honest, this is very similar to painting. This is a gravity or a station gun. And it's not very different as far as the size of the pattern and the amount of paint than my uh, regular Binks. No, it's not a Binks. It's a copy of a Binks gun that yeah, I've had for 35 years. But, I mean, I admit, I don't use these things every day. Don't get me wrong. And I do clean them. But I've still done quite a few cars with all these guns and lots of little projects too, you know, like, yeah, you know, painted air cleaners to match the, the rest of the car color and all that kind of stuff. Trying to paint all the edges. Now, that's that whole thing painted. One coat. There's still a bit of paint left, so anybody's keeping track, four ounces is enough to do that. It's a really nice color. I really like it. This is Signal Red. This is the color of the car. It was brand new. But it's very bright. I'm a bit surprised if you had a can of Chevrolet orange engine paint, you could almost do touch-ups with it. It's, it's almost that orange. You're wondering. I had to shrink the hell out of that area. And it was still oil canning a bit, so I just, that's actually part of the old fender, one of the old front fenders. I just glued it on there just to stop it from, you know, every time somebody touching it, it popping in. There's a lot of crash damage on these fenders. This one had a crease all the way in, uh, and it was pushed in, and they just pulled the bondo in. And when I Got it all back up square. That area was sticking up about a half an inch. I had to shrink it with a heat and a cold rag. But that, like I say, that one little area when I was sanding it, I noticed that, you know, it didn't take much pressure to make it pop down and it wouldn't spring back. So I had a little bit of a, this is that new panel adhesive that new cars use. And I bought a little bit of it for a couple of little things. So I just finished up a tube and like I say, I just, this was one of the bottoms of one of the front fenders. There was a bit of good metal in it. So I thought, well, no more appropriate to put it back on the car. So I'm just going to finish up this paint in here. It's probably pretty close to being empty because four ounces of paint isn't very much. So I bought this red paint with the uh, hardener and the reducer is $500 a gallon. Yeah, that's what I say. I'm disappointed, but that new gun didn't work with a darn. I don't know. 
Well, it didn't work. And I thought, you know, maybe it'll just get a little bit of dirt in it. So I blew it back, and you could hear it bubbling through the paint. It still wouldn't see. There's something wrong with it. I may take it apart, take a good look at it. If I find anything, I'll let you know. Well, I did an autopsy. I took it apart, I cleaned it. And what's happening is the very end of the nozzle, not the outer nozzle, but the inner one where the the rod that meters the flow of paint goes through, is plugging in front of the needle. So on the very outside edge. So I took it apart. I tried a couple of different things. If I run pure lacquer thinner through it, it works. But as soon as there's any paint, so I just used some dirty lacquer thinner, which was left over from cleaning the gun, so it's 95% lacquer thinner, 5% paint, if that. And you spray it, and after about 20 seconds, the end freezes up again. So as near as I can tell, the paint is drying inside the end of the needle, inside of the end of the inner nozzle, in front of the needle valve from the air going past it. Now, none of my other guns have ever done that. Uh, now, I'll grant you that this is, it looks like it's a 0.6 millimeter needle. That's what it looks like it says. And I think my sharp gun is a, a millimeter and a half, and I have a one millimeter needle for it that I've used. Never had any trouble with that, but that's twice as big. So, if you were using, you know, some kind of a paint that didn't dry as fast, so a water-based paint or something like that, if you're airbrushing, you know, whatever people do with airbrushes, I don't, but using an automotive paint, it just doesn't seem like it will work. It will literally plug in about 20, 25 seconds of running, just like it did on the, on the fender here. So... I don't know what to say. It doesn't say that it's for water-based paints or anything like that. I don't know why it should do that. I've certainly never run across that in my siphon feed guns or my top feed guns. I don't know. So, uh, fortunately, it was not very much money, 15 bucks. So, 15 bucks, you know, is 15 bucks. It's a three gallons of gas here in California. But, you know, at least you know, I bought my sharp gun 30 years ago. It was 150 bucks. So... Anyway, so that's what it sees. So I cannot recommend that you buy this for any kind of automotive use. I might try using it with some Rust-Oleum or something later, see if that works. Because I've been using Rust-Oleum uh, instead of buying it in rattle cans, I've been buying it in little quartz and shooting that. I usually use that second gun that you saw me using. So I may try it with that just to see if it'll do something like that. But I can tell you that I'm a lot happier with my old gun. Well. A bit disappointing, but I have to say that was a, a solid fail on that gun. I think I some paint in my mustache. Um, but, you know, that's how it goes. Like I say, it was pretty inexpensive, so what the hell. It was like 15 bucks. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and we'll see you next time.